welcome back friends welcome to another video from shomu's biology and in this video we'll be talking about the protein called thrombin it's a very important protein which is very much necessary in blood clotting and uh, actually this video will be too much helpful for you if you understand the whole blood clotting pathway or hemostasis pathway but if you don't know but still i will make you understand so what is thrombin you know, uh, when you look at the point of view of a protein, thrombin is an important protein and it is, uh, in simple term, we can call it as a serine protease. A serine protease, that means it's a type of enzyme. Protease means a type of enzyme which will break down protein. Now, the presence of protease in our human body is very much important because there are certain proteins in our body as in inactivated form. When we cleave those proteins, then only those proteins become activated and that's what proteases do that's what thrombin will do we are going to see later so it is a kind of serine protease why serine because in the active site of thrombin we have serine residues present serine is an amino acid we all know that and that amino acid is found in the active side of thrombin that's why it's called serine protease now thrombin in the form of uh, thrombin can have two different types of form it itself has an active inactivated form that's called prothrombin that's a precursor from form of thrombin so if i if i write it here we have prothrombin that is the inactive form of thrombin now this prothrombin become activated to thrombin because thrombin is the activated form. This is the active form. So it itself needs to be converted from the inactive to the active state that is thrombin. Prothrombin is insoluble. But thrombin is a soluble type of protein. Because, uh, sorry, prothrombin is soluble type of protein. Thrombin is fibrous. It's not soluble. Insoluble type of proteins. Now what happens actually in our blood plasma, prothrombin is present, it is solu soluble, so it is present there. But once it is converted itself into thrombin, right, it no longer acts to be kind of soluble, so it, it is kind of becoming insoluble. Not very much, but kind of insoluble inside. So what happens actually, thrombin, once it is formed, this thrombin helps to create blood clot in our wound regions for example if you have a cut in your hand or any regions of your body your body needs to prepare for all the materials inside our body to actually seal that wound and that's very very important to minimize the blood loss of our body that's very much important and the stages of blood clotting is actually in all term called as hemostasis and this pathway is a huge pathway involving many varieties of proteins from different regions of your body to actually coordinate the task for you Thrombin is a heart of this whole process, right? There are other many more accessory proteins that are helping thrombin, but thrombin actually the final type of protein which will help in the coagulation of blood, the clotting of the blood. Now what thrombin does actually, in our blood there is another protein present and that's called fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is another soluble protein. So once fibrinogen is present in blood, it's soluble, no problem. But once this fibrinogen is activated, it is termed as fibrin. Now fibrin is something which is fibrous. It is fibrous in nature. So it is insoluble. So as fibrin is insoluble in nature, if a lot of fibrin molecules start to form, those fibrin will interact with each other and they will form fibrin polymer because fibrin monomer is present now those fibrin monomers can interact with themselves to form a fibrin polymer so once the fibrin polymer is formed that fibrin polymer ultimately at the at, at last cause the blood clotting it forms the blood clot at the end and for the clotting, they require other type of RBCs and other cells are there. So that's why you can see the red 
plug kind of form and that's due to the presence of these fibrous proteins because you know if you have a cut what happens if you have a simple cut you need to first have the structure that structure is provided the matrix of fiber is provided by fibrin then other clotting factors and clotting materials of red blood cells or any other cell debris or tissue debris start to arrange there to ultimately clot the region that's how the blood clotting works I'm not going to talk about the details but the reason for how this blood clot occurs in the interaction of thrombin with with this fibrin and that's I'm going to talk about here because we know thrombin is present it is activated by another protein called protein S protein S helps in the activation of prothrombin into thrombin once thrombin is active that thrombin cleaves fibrinogen because you know thrombin is a serine protease it has the ability to break down proteins so here is the protein fibrinogen and thrombin actually cleaves fibrinogen break fibrinogen down into fibrin monomers so once we produce fibrin monomers it becomes active and it becomes insoluble it becomes fibrous so once we have fibrous fibrin monomers they will interact with themselves to form fibrin polymer and then the blood clot forms so here is the important stage that is played by thrombin because this is the interaction between thrombin to activate fibrinogen so that the fibrin uh, network start to build and the blood clot actually occurs so that's the whole process of the importance of thrombin in blood clotting right so that is kind of what I am going to talk about thrombin because that's that's kind of it. I am not going to talk about the structural details and all these things. But that's how the process works. If you like the video and understand it, subscribe, make a comment or like the video and uh, thank you.